grabs data that my code uses to perform a calculation. Um, if we look at the Cooper code, sorry, uh, I'm not prepared here, but um, sorry, there's a lot of files. So um, let's go to um, here. So here's a here's a place, for example, where this is get ta tag get. So here, notice this is tag get data. But because of the optimizations, these functions are inlined, and the function that at the end of the day gets called is get tag data, not tag get data. So that's an example of where you have to be careful with the optimization. But you can see that I have these big loops that iterate over a lot of things, and I call get ta tag get data in the loop. So one thing I could do is move these tag get data calls out of the loop. Call it once in the beginning, and then not have to call it again. And then not have to call it every single iteration. And based on the data here, and by looking at the get tag data function, I know that the reason it's slow is because that function has a certain amount of overhead. And if I move it out of the loop, I only incur the overhead once instead of 364 million times. So, um, so that's kind of interesting. Let's go down to the second part. So let's say I want to know, okay, so I have like 100 different functions that call get tag data. So now I want to move this function call out of the loop. But there's 100 different places where I call it. So I have to identify which, fun which places call it the most times. That way I can kind of at least do one of those places and test to see if, it's, if, that's, if that's useful or not. Um, so if I, that's, that's where the second part of the table is super useful. So I'm going to search for get tag data. And then again, this isn't it because there's no number. There's no number here. Okay, so get tag data gets called 364 million times by tag server get data. So I have to go find that function. Do you see why you didn't know about that from the table at the top? Because because the table at the top doesn't include information about its children. So we have to go back to get data which will be above this because, um, so here it is. So tag server get data calls one function, get tag data. It calls that function many times. Um, and this function get data in it and its children takes up 40% of the runtime of the code. So it spends 4.5 seconds in itself, 14.5 seconds in its children, and, and of the 14.5 seconds, all of it's consumed by this one function. But now this is where the part above this function, above the, this line, is super useful. Because I want to move those function calls out of the loop. So I can see here that 65 million of the 364 million times it's called is in compute face centers, this function here. So the first place I should go and test out this theory of, of pulling this call out of the loop is get face centers, or is compute face centers. And then 36 million of the times it's called in compute limiter. And then compute areas is 22 million of the times. So you can see how this table is useful. I now know exactly what to do and exactly where to do it. Okay, now maybe that'll work or not, but at least I'm going into it with a good educated guess. Isn't it kind of funny that it um, works backwards? You know, the, it's in this list of like hydro spheres, here all these little functions within get data. It's funny that it lists the top ones are the least. Yeah. Why, it's, why do you have any notion of why that? Is? Oh, why the one that's called three hundred three thousand times is first? Yeah. I don't know. I'm assuming that it's just so that when you look here, you get the most useful data. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, and then again, these two columns say that, okay. Compute face centers took 0.8 seconds in itself and 2.5 seconds in its children. Well, it's probably because if you took the output of this file, you could then jet and you knew one, one function used a lot of time, you could just prep for that and say again, you know, the three surrounding lines. And yeah. Now you have the most useful data. Yeah, exactly. So, so that we've spent about how much time? 25 minutes or so looking at. At that profiling. Are there any questions? I'm going to move on to debugging now, which is phase beta. Uh, are there any questions or anything? No? Okay.
I just want to say that uh, in terms of visual profiler, I don't know if you're using uh, GPROC or GPROC GMI right now, but it might be some value that you can use this KCash grind. What is it again? KCash grind. K-cash grind. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, cool. So... Visual, visual, you know, you boxes, how big the box is, how much time is it. It also gives you an idea of how things are uh, interrelated by connecting them with one and putting boxes inside each other. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess we should, uh, I'll research this, and after this I'll make some notes on the website, so if I, if I can figure out what's going on, um, I'll, uh, I'll put something there. Anyway, I, I think the principles are hopefully the same between these programs, so that's useful. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move on to debugging. Okay, it's going to happen now. Um, let's go back to that same really simple program that we had. Um, we'll start with the C one again, the C plus plus one, and let's say I want to debug this. So I'm going to do something to this program real quick. I'm going to uncomment this function error, which generates an exception because I make a in error I make a vector with ten elements, and I ask it for the twentieth element. So that's going to make an error. So I'm going to compile test.cpp and I'm going to run it. And it's going to say that there was an error. Um, so if I want to run this in the debugger, there's PG for profiling and then there's minus G for debugging. Minus G is for debugging. Debugging, you want to run with, my, I believe you want to run with minus O0. That's what I do because usually your bug will still exist when you run with minus O0 and your code will be identical. You know the source code you wrote will be identical to what the compiler runs, so minus o zero is really useful for debugging. Sometimes you have to, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to say anything else. So my understanding is that there is one actual debugger that everyone uses. It's GDB. It's a text-based debugger, and then people make graphical debuggers on top of GDB. Does anyone disagree with that? Intel Fortran also has their own debugger, which I'll show you. But so, what, in other words, whatever GDB's capabilities are, that's what every other program's capabilities are too. So there's like the Eclipse debugger, which I think uses GDB. There's the um, there's DDD, which I'm going to show you. There's a KDE debugger. All of these are just front ends to GDB. So. Um, if like you're wondering whether your debugger can do this or not, and you're using DDD, you might want to find out if GDB can do it because that's the actual question you want to ask. Um, okay, is that correct, Ahmed? What's what's the name of uh, the DDDs and Eclipse? What do you call it? The interface something? Oh, integrated development environment. Okay, integrated. Yeah. So. so. You said that it uses the debugger. Yeah, there is a built-in debugger, but the behind the scenes, it's it's using GDB. Okay. I think. I hope that's right. No. I think that's right. I was okay. Saying, I think PGDBG is for Fortran. Portland Group. Yeah. Okay. I think that's for the Fortran flavor of like the same kind of debugger. Right. Because like GDB won't go into Fortran modules and stuff, but. Is that true? Yes. Okay. What did they call it again? Integrated modules. Development environment. So, I can only look at some variables. I have a yeah, I have a Fortran example. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. Anyway, so I I compile with minus g minus o zero. I run it. I have the same error, but now it has g debugging. So I can run gdb, and I can give it my program a dot out. And then if I open it up and I type run. It'll run in here, except now we're in the, debu the debugger, and if I type where, it'll tell me exactly where the error was generated. So in this case, it was in main, which called error, and then in file test.cpp line 46, that's where the error actually was generated. You can see that it then calls da 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 but that's all like 
internal C++ stuff. Usually you can look at this list and hopefully you know what your source